Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the transcriptional regulation of macro autophagy. And in this lesson we're going to specifically talk about transcriptional activators of macro autophagy. So we've talked about macro autophagy in that it is a bulk degradation via autophagosomes and the autophagosomes carry the cargo to be degraded within a lysosome. Now in previous lessons we've talked about some of the regulation of macro autophagy and we've talked about uh, nutrients being very important in regulating macroautophagy. We talked about in a fed state how macroautophagy is regulated in a fasting and starvation state how macroautophagy is also regulated. But we don't haven't really talked about some stress conditions such as hypoxia. And in, in fact, hypoxia and other stress-related conditions like DNA damage can also regulate macroautophagy. And we'll talk about how they regulate macroautophagy through transcriptional regulation. So just as a brief overview of what we'll be talking about in this lesson, one of the transcription factors we'll be talking about is TFEB. Um, we've talked about TFEB as a master regulator of lysosomal biogenesis and autophagy function. We're also going to talk about E2F1. We're going to talk about ATF4. These are both... Uh, transcriptional activators of macroautophagy. We're also going to talk about FOXO3 as an activator of macroautophagy, NRF2 as a transcriptional activator of macroautophagy, HIF1 as a transcriptional activator of macroautophagy, P53 as an activator of macroautophagy, and PPAR-alpha as an activator of macroautophagy. Conversely, we're also going to talk about, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about transcriptional inactivators or transcriptional repressors of macrotophagy. These include ZAXCAN3, HSF1 or heat shock factor 1, FXR, and nuclear factor kappa B or NF kappa B. And we'll talk about how all of these can regulate macrotophagy through transcriptional regulation. So here is the diagram of macroautophagy. Um, if you need a better um, overview or a, uh, introduction to macroautophagy, I'd suggest you watch the introduction to macroautophagy lesson before you start this lesson. So how do a lot of these transcription factors actually regulate this uh, pathway? Well, they regulate the pathway through increasing the expression of proteins within the pathway. So the first one we'll talk about is TFEB. So what does TFEB regulate? Now, we've talked about how TFEB, along with other MITF family transcription factors, such as MITF and TFE3, they are regulated uh, during a fed state. So if, they're, if, it's in a, if the cell's in a fed state, these proteins like TFEB are phosphorylated and bound to 1433 protein, which prohibits them from entering the nucleus. But during fasting and starvation, TFEB becomes activated. It becomes dephosphorylated and allows it to enter the nucleus and to induce the transcription of its targets. And what are some of the targets? Well, some of the targets include some of the targets include ATF4. So this is one of the targets of TFEB. Another a uh, couple targets that it also uh, actually upregulates is ATG16. It also upregulates LC3. So this is an important one here, LC3. We know that this is involved in autosomal uh, maturation and elongation. And it also upregulates the cargo receptor P62. It also upregulates these proteins we call WIPI proteins. These proteins are important for recruiting these cargo receptors. And some papers also show that it upregulates ALK1. It also upregulates lysosome, lysosomal biogenesis. It upregulates some of the cathepsin proteins. So you can see here that TVB has many major functions in the pathway. It has many major uh, many major effects. It can, for one thing, it can upregulate some of the uh, proteins involved in pre-autophagosomal pre formation. It can upregulate proteins involved in the lysosomal maturation and elongation. It can upregulate proteins involved in um, recruiting cargo receptors. It upregulates the cargo receptors themselves. Uh, 
So it can upregulate the amount of mature autophagosomal formation, also upregulate lysosomal biogenesis. This means it also upregulates autolysosomes and something we call um, lysosomal recycling. And it also actually will upregulate the recycling of autolysosomes as well. So TVB has a wide range of effects on the macroautophagy pathway. The next transcription factor we're going to talk about is E2F1. And again, this is a transcriptional activator of macroautophagy. And E2F1 is involved in stress-related mechanism, and it's actually inhibited by NF-kappa B. We'll talk about that in another lesson. And E2F1 itself can have a couple of different functions to actually upregulate macrotrophagy. One, it actually upregulates a protein known as BNIP3. We'll talk about that in another lesson. But we'll, what I want to really focus on here is how it affects the uh, macrotrophagy pathway we see here. So E2F1 itself transcriptionally upregulates a couple of very important proteins in the macrotrophagy pathway. One of them is, again, ALK1. ALK1, again, as we know, is involved in pre-autophagosomal initiation. Another important protein that E2F1 upregulates is LC3. LC3. And another protein that E2F1 upregulates is ATG5. So only a few proteins it upregulates, but these are very important proteins. So E2F1 can itself upregulate this portion of the macrotopsia pathway, can upregulate pre-autophagosomal um, initiation and formation, and it can also upregulate L the critically important LC31, the microtubule associated protein, uh, protein LC31. So LC31, as we again have talked about many times, it's involved in elongation and maturation of the autophagosome. The next transcriptional activator of macrotophagy I want to talk about is ATF4. And ATF4 itself is activated and upregulated by severe hypoxia. So when a cell is experiencing severe hypoxia, ATF4 becomes activated and upregulated, and it allows ATF4 to enter the nucleus and to upregulate the expression of a few key proteins in the macrotophagy pathway. One of those, again, is ALK1. ALK1 is upregulated by ATF4. Another one is LC3. LC3 is, again, itself upregulated by ATF4. And another one that is upregulated is ATG5. So ATF4 and E2F1 pretty much upregulate and uh, pretty much upregulate the same proteins in the macrotophagy pathway. So think about E2F1 and ATF4 having the same function. They upregulate the same proteins in the macrotophagy pathway. But in this case, ATF4 is upregulated and activated by severe hypoxia. The next transcriptional activator I want to talk about is FOXO3. Now, FOXO3 is itself inhibited by AKT, and we've talked about this in the AKT lesson, but um, just for a review, AKT inhibits FOXO3, um, and AKT is, is itself activated by PI3K. So PI3K can activate AKT, which can inhibit FOXO3. So in a case where we see a suppression of the PI3K pathway, we can see an activation of FOXO3. So FOXO3, when it's activated, it can enter the nucleus and it can activate a series of different proteins involved in the macrotophagy pathway. One of those proteins is ATG4. ATG4 is involved in the processing of pro-LC3 to LC3-1. It can activate or induce the expression of ATG5. It can induce the expression of ATG12. It can induce the expression of Becklin 1. It can induce the expression of BNIP3. We've talked about BNIP3 before. We, doesn't, we don't have it on this diagram, but it can increase the expression of BNIP3. It can increase the expression of 
LC3 and Bulk 1. So FOX03 can increase the expression of a few different key proteins in the pathway. It can increase the expression of LC3, which can, um, it can also then be um, processed by the increased amount of 8G4, which FOXO3 upregulates. And FOXO3 upregulates a couple of key proteins involved in some of the initial steps of macrotophagy, including ALK1 and Becklin1, and some of these other proteins involved in the, um, in some of the conjugation nucleation steps, such as ATG5 and AGD12. So FOXO3 can increase or induce the upregulation of some of the initial steps in the macro autophagy pathway. The next transcriptional activator of macrotophagy I want to talk about is NRF2. And NRF2 is itself regulated by um, some nutrient signals such as amino acid content and so forth. And it plays one important role in that it can actually upregulate the expression of P62, that important cargo receptor involved in the partial selectivity of macrotophagy. The next transcriptional activator we're going to discuss is HIF1 or hypoxia induced factor 1. And as its name suggests, HIF1 is activated by hypoxia like ATF4. But in contrast to ATF4, which is activated by severe hypoxia, HIF1 is activated by mild hypoxia. And when HIF1 is activated, it can enter the nucleus and induce the expression of BNIP3. And we've talked about BNIP3 before, but we haven't really said what BNIP3 actually does. And BNIP3 actually activates Becklin1. Now, we've talked about in another lesson that Becklin1 is inhibited by BCL2, but BNIP3 can actually inhibit this uh, BCL2 inhibition on Becklin1, leading to the activation of Becklin1. The next transcription factor that is involved in upregulating macrotophagy is P53. And we don't really talk about P53 a whole lot in the context of macrotophagy, but we, we do talk about P53 in the context of stress and in particular DNA damage. So DNA damage can lead to an activation of P53. And P53 is itself can then enter the nucleus and transcriptionally upregulate proteins involved in the macrotophagy pathway. Some of these include ATG4. So P53 can upregulate ATG4. It can upregulate ATG7. And it can upregulate ALK1. So these are a few of the proteins that P53 can actually upregulate to upregulate the macrotophagy pathway. So we've talked about PPAR alpha in a previous lesson on feeding and fasting. And we've talked about that during a fed state, FXR, uh, the transcriptional repressor of macrotophagy, actually represses PPAR alpha. So during the fed state, PPAR alpha is inhibited, but during the fasting state, PPAR alpha can be activated. So when PPAR alpha is activated, it can lead to the transcriptional induction of proteins involved in the macrotophagy pathway. Some of these proteins include ATG3, ATG5, and ATG7. So we talked about ATG3 uh, and 7. These are involved in processing LC31 to LC32. So this can lead to an increase in LC32 and an increase in the maturation and elongation of autophagosomes. PPAR alpha also increases levels of Becklin1. It can also increase levels of LC3. It can also increase levels of TFEB. So this is important. We've talked about this in another lesson. It can increase levels of TFEB. So again, we've talked about TFEB as a master regulator of this pathway. So PPAR alpha can lead to increased TFEB. And it can also lead to increased ALK1. So as you can see, PPAR alpha can have a major impact 
on the macrotophagy pathway, it itself can increase levels of ALK1, Beclin1, which are important in some of the initial steps of the macrotophagy pathway. It can increase levels of LC3 and some of these conjugating proteins, ATG7 and ATG3, which lead to an increase in LC3-2 to lead to increased mature autophagosomal formation and itself can increase the levels of TFEB, the master regulator of lysosomal biogenesis and macrotophagy function, which can lead to even more upregulation of other proteins in this pathway, including proteins involved in lysosomal biogenesis. So PPR alpha has a major effect on the macrotophagy pathway, and it itself, again, is upregulated by fasting and is inhibited by FXR3. And we'll talk a bit more about transcriptional repression um, of macrotophagy in the next lesson. So anyways, guys, that was a lesson on the transcriptional activation of the macrotophagy pathway. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.